Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing Harsh Shadows. This is a small solo card game. It's also the first game published by Wonderspell Games, uh, which is co-founded by Jason Tagmeyer, whose name you might recognize from Button Shy. The designer is Rachel Bruner, and I'm pretty sure this is her first game as well. So let's see how it turned out. All right, so here's the full setup for Harsh Shadows, which is again a solo spy versus spy game. This is a game where your goal is to get the right cards in your hand and not discard the cards that you need before the end of the game. Your ultimate goal is to make sure that you have collected the three evidence items that you'll need, that you do not have the red herring in your hand, and then your goal is to get to the same space as the spy in order to accuse them and confront them with the evidence. So in this case, we're Agent Torres. We're gonna be going after codename Grey Knight and we'll be playing a cat and mouse game across these nine locations in order to get what we need and not run into the spy too many times. So basically each turn you get to move and take actions and then the spy is going to move according to the directions on this little deck. The other thing that's nice is that there's a random setup. You lay the locations out differently each time, but every single location except for the one in the middle is gonna have like a little ability that will help you either in terms of making the spy move or getting cheaper peeks into the evidence decks or a number of things that you're gonna enjoy playing with as you get to know this game. The other thing that you must do in order to win is place a tracking bug on the spy. So you wanna be paying attention to how the spy moves and using the powers on these cards, in particular the Resto Hotel, if that one's revealed, to place the bug and then try to direct the enemy spy onto it so they become bugged. So whenever you move to a new location, you have the option of using its ability. You also, turn over and take the top card of the discovery deck. Only two cards can accumulate per location, but if there's a discovery card, you pick it up. So sometimes it's an item and we know that this card is somewhere in one of these decks, but we don't know yet if it's the false lead, some evidence or a red herring. So we would take it and hold on to it. And the spy will just kind of drop discovery cards as they go. In fact, once this discovery deck runs out, you're on a bit of a timer because then you have only a few turns left before the spy actually escapes. So you need to be efficient with how you play. You don't actually have enough clues or time to uh, actually look at all of these items usually, so you have to use some deduction and plan things out. Other discovery cards might have things on them like, well, here's another item. Ah, yes, a clue card. So these clue cards are what you use to find out what is in these files. So you spend clues in order to get a peek at what's in here. So do I need the binoculars? I don't know, but I might get a hint if I spend clues to figure out either what the false leads are, so there are four of those, what the evidence is, so there's three of those, or I can spend for the red herring. I can either spend three clues just to see it, or if I've revealed regular evidence, I only have to spend one. So you're also kind of budgeting how many clues do I have, how many do I want to spend in order to figure out what in your hand is actually worth having. How do you get rid of cards, you ask? Well, there are two ways for that to happen. One is for the spy to move to your location. So the spy can only move adjacently. So this is a major jump, don't worry about that. But if you and the spy are in the same location, you have to give up a card from your hand uh, because it's sort of like they found you and fleeced you. The other way that you'll have to drop cards is if you uncover a bomb. Uh, to defuse a bomb, you have to either use the one-time defusing kit or for the three other bombs that are hanging out in this deck, um, you'll have to actually discard a card from your hand. So the thing that makes that interesting in this particular game is that if you don't know what things in your hand matter or don't matter, then you can accidentally discard evidence that's going to cause you to lose the game. And the other thing is you want to know what the red herring is as quickly as possible so that once you pick it up, you can throw it away because you don't want to have that in your hand at the time that you make an accusation. So it's a game about collecting the right cards and figuring out what to keep and what to toss, and that can get really challenging especially because if you spend clue cards and then you end up running into the spy or having to defuse a bomb, that means that you only have item cards left to throw away. And if the binoculars are in the evidence pile, you're in trouble and you just don't know if you haven't been committed 
to using your clues on these items. The other thing that's kind of neat is that you have these direction cards to tell you where the spy moves. So like, let's say that we're back on the first turn, the spy can't go this way and can't go that way. So you start with the direction that's on the card and the, and so you start with the larger arrow that's on the card. Then you look at the one that is in the corner. And if that doesn't work, you rotate the card 180 degrees and then go back to using the large arrow. So in this case, we know the spy would go like that. So as you can see, you can move diagonally in this game. The spy is only one away from me, depending on what card I draw. So you're gonna be doing a bit of an edgy dance the entire game, trying not to run into this person before it's the right time. So those are the basics of Harsh Shadows. You're gonna to wanna to collect discovery cards, figure out which ones you need to keep, which ones it's safe to toss, and which one you absolutely have to get rid of before the end of the game. Meanwhile, you also have to get a tracking bug on the spy, which you can use twice to anticipate their movements, but it also has to be on them at the time of confrontation. So use your time wisely and spy well. All right, so now for some final thoughts. Uh, I think that this game is cute. I think it is fun. I think it's a perfectly good light game that you might use as a stocking stuffer or like a way to pass a work lunch or an hour in the afternoon. And, you know, I think it's a really, really nice first design effort. I enjoyed the combination of spatial puzzle and logic puzzle where you're trying to avoid the opposing spy, uh, trying to bug them by using the powers on the cards, trying to use process of elimination to figure out which items you could stand to toss every time you uncover a bomb or run into your enemy. And so there were a number of things happening in the game that made it thinky, made it fun, and made it a really enjoyable experience. That said, after multiple plays, I do think it can get a little bit repetitive. I think that because there is an obvious best place to try to bug your opponent, that you're gonna just use that same card every time. And I also noticed that I use the same strategy to do my process of elimination of items that I could keep and items to toss every time, which is that I would look for the kind of irrelevant items, figure out what I could get rid of, and then spend some points to check out the red herring and make sure that I got rid of that too. And I very rarely took anything from the pile of items that were actually associated with the case as evidence. And I think the fact that I kind of gravitated strategically towards the same things every time means that this game's long-term replay value may not be the best. I can see myself pulling it out in a few months and trying it again and having a good time. And I will say that you do occasionally have to adjust your strategy based on sort of luck of the draw. If you run into too many bombs, if the AI just moves in the wrong direction a few too many times, you can have a bad game. But still, the gameplay pathways that I was choosing tended to be roughly the same each time. That said, sometimes you have to make some tense guesses that can lose you the game because you just have to get rid of a card and you don't know what your situation really is. And it's funny. And also just the process of figuring out what items are going to be in the evidence deck is actually pretty fun. So this is a game that I don't think is going to replace any of my favorite small box solo games right now, but it's interesting. It's charming. Uh, I want to see more from Rachel Bruner and I really do like the theme. So if you want just kind of like a simple solo stocking stuffer and you maybe want to spend an afternoon solving a mystery a few times, and then getting the game back out after a while, uh, then I think that this is a solid choice. Thanks so much for watching and happy gaming.